Let's fan cast something that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. That's going to be the new Authority movie under James Gunn's DCU brand, him in charge. He announced this film. I'm very excited to watch it. Uh, it's been a dream movie for me. I've read some of the OG comics. I own the first couple omnibuses and all the little ones after that. I've also read some of Steve Orlando's Apollo and Midnighter comics, as well as the new Stormwatch. They're, they're, I like the Apollo Midnighter, the new Stormwatch is just okay. But if you're unfamiliar, the Authority is basically like a super violent Justice League. They deal with larger cosmic threats. So, for example, a tear in space, and a large Lovecraftian creature comes out, the authority would show up and, and kick its ass and kill it probably and send it back to where it came from. Uh, it's not something the Justice League would deal with. The authority have no qualms with killing, so they're a sort of powerhouse of all these different larger than life anti-heroes. So the first one, the, the information we have so far is that James Gunn says that there's a writer. There hasn't been a director cast yet. However, the first and only member to be cast is Angela Spica, the engineer. She'll be played by Maria Gabriela de Faria. Uh, I'm not familiar with this actress, so I'm not particularly excited, but I'm, I'm glad to see that they're sticking with the uh, same sort of look of the comic book character, at least. Uh, let's start with the team members. First up, Apollo, sort of gay Superman pastiche, uh, solar power, uh, heat, heat vision, uh, flies through enemies, very large gay. That's very important. Apollo and Midnighter must be gay. If they're not, I will be upset at that. Uh, for my choices, I got Alexander Skarsgård. He's very big. If you've seen The Northman, you know how muscular he can be. Uh, he can also be kind of sensitive and quiet if you've seen him and other things like drama films. Uh, my other choice is Alexander Ludwig. He is a big sort of buff man as well. I, I've only seen him in like two things. I think he's in Hunger Games and I think he might be in uh, in time, but I haven't seen Vikings or anything like that, but the two of them play good Vikings. They would play big buff tall blonde men. Those are my two choices for Apollo. And of course, if you got Apollo, you got to have Midnighter. Who is Midnighter? He's considered the world's biggest bastard. Uh, different versions of the comic, he is a street fighter who's unparalleled. He's like a dirty sort of brawler. Other types, he's got a Prometheus-like uh, uh, mind. Uh, Prometheus is a supervillain uh, who has like a computer fight brain thing. So some versions of Midnighter have the same thing to give him an advantage, but you know, the OG comics, he's just like a brawler type with no power. He's kind of like a Batman, a gay Batman and lover of Apollo. For my choices though, for Midnighter, I got Scott Adkins. He's a little bit small, um, and, but he's a good fighter and it would be a cool contrast, you know, they both don't have to be big buff men, but Scott Atkins, he's kind of underutilized. He's usually a henchman in movies. He's in a couple of direct-to-video things, but he's, he's very underrated and I, I think it's time for him to finally have stretch his acting chops and be uh, Midnighter. My alternate choice is Alan Richson, uh, who also played um, Hawk in uh, Titans and uh, is now playing Reacher in the Jack Reacher series. Alan Richin is really large and big. He's intimidating. He could be a, a fighter. We've already seen him fight in Reacher and you know people since uh, Titans is over a lot of people have been wanting to see what else he can do in DC. There's been rumors he'd play Batman as well but you know why not gay Batman with Midnighter? That's a good choice I think. So those are my two for that. Uh, the next one is The Doctor. Uh, the Doctor is a sort of shaman. He is uh, connected to the Earth, a heroin addict, uh, the, the version that I read. And I only have two choices, uh, Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy just might win the Oscar for Oppenheimer. Uh, very serious actor. Uh, a lot of people have wanted him to play Doctor Doom. That's their, their sort of choice. But I don't think he'd ever do something so... Um, you know, villainous. And, no, I, I mean, I mean that in the sense that he wouldn't choose something so mainstream superhero-ish after Oppenheimer. But I could see him playing like a drug addict and a sort of lackadaisical sort of, you know, type who's sort of out of it all the time. You know, he'd probably lose weight for the role, just a sort of match of the heroin addict sort of role. My other backup is Christopher Abbott. He's a very underrated actor who's in a lot of stuff. I've seen him in everything from Poor Things to Possessor to uh, there's a uh, he's, he's in a lot of movies where it's just two people in a movie. Uh, I forget what they're called. There's one with Mia Wasikowska and the, uh, there's another one called Sanctuary. So Christopher Abbott's definitely underrated. I'd like to see him play a sort of bigger role 
in that. Uh, those, those are my two choices for the doctor. And um, let's see, ooh, Jenny Sparks. Okay, so my first choice was Florence Pugh, British, but she can't. I don't think she can, not because she's not talented, but because she might have a no-compete contract clause in there because she's already playing Yelena Barova and many properties. She's going to be in the Thunderbolts, so she can't actually be, I don't think she can, unless her contract's over, but that would be my first choice. But if she can't, my backups are Jodie Comer from uh, Killing Eve. You know, she's not done much since. She's done The Last Duel, which bombed, and she was one of the Star Wars films, but I think she's talented enough to play Jenny Sparks. She can play the tough girl, I think, that sassy kind of like tough leader of the authority. And uh, my other backup was Mackenzie Davis. She's, I've only seen her in Blade Runner, but you know, she's Canadian. I gotta support my fellow Canuck, but she's got that sort of spunky, sassy kind of vibe. Now, I haven't seen her in a lot of stuff, but I've seen the trailer for Terminator Dark Fate. That's good enough. All right, the next one's going to be Jack Hawksmoor. He is a, a, a sort of, I don't actually know his origin really, but he basically has metal stuff on his feet because he is in tune with cities. Cities to him are like entities. They're like living, breathing sort of. He has a connection to cities, so he doesn't wear shoes. And he basically connects with them and uh, sort of uses them at, for, for super strength as well as other powers. I don't really remember. But basically, he can connect with cities and, and the different sort of, uh, you know, get a feel for where things are just by touching the ground. So for my, my pick, main, main pick is going to be Patrick Wilson. Uh, you know, he's already been in a couple of DC movies, so he's already got that Warner Brothers connection kind of thing. He played Orm in two Aquaman films. But, you know, I think the, was the Conjuring movies are kind of ending soon. They might do one more of those. But I want to see him in another role. I want to see him play Jack Hawksmore. I think he's handsome enough. He's charming enough. He can play the role for sure. I think he's got that sort of affable sort of charm. I like that. Uh, my backup choice for Jack Hawksmore was Tom Hopper from Umbrella Academy, British large guy. He's got that sort of large burliness to it. I think he could bring that to the thing. My other choice was Alan Richardson, but I already chose him for Midnighter. The next one is going to be Swift. Swift is the Asian character with wings. She's kind of like a hawk girl adjacent. Uh, gotta be Asian. Gotta cast someone Asian. And I, I can only think of two. Uh, Natasha Lou Bordizzo from uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2. Not a good movie, but she's, she's a martial artist. And I also like uh, Jessica Henwick from many things. She's loving monsters and uh, she's, she's been in a lot of stuff. And I, I, she's probably my first choice, then Natasha Liu, because Natasha Liu, she's okay, but you know, Jessica Henwick, I, I, I want her more because she doesn't do a lot of stuff. All right, so we're gonna move on to potential villains. I don't know who the villain's going to be, but um, let's just uh, go with it. Uh, if they choose the Blue Bloods, the Blue Bloods are from another dimension. They are these large blue aristocratic alien creatures that overtake other planets and um, assault things, like, like badly. Uh, but I would choose the cast of Hellboy. I'd like Ron Perlman as the president, the big guy with the horns, uh, maybe Doug, Doug Jones and Salma Blair in the smaller roles. You know, why not? Just because they've all worked with prosthetics before. Well, not Selma, but the other two have, and they would be comfortable, and, you know, they haven't been doing much. And if they go with the evil shaman, uh, in one of the storylines, basically, the world's out of sorts, and they have to give the power of the, the doctor back to this other guy who it was a psycho, and he used... He basically, it would be the equivalent of someone with immense power going psycho on the world and just destroying countries and planets. I would go with Patterson Joseph. He's been in a lot of small things like the, that dirty black bag and Wonka. He's a really good talent. Uh, he could play something kind of aristocratic and kind of mean. I'd love to see him just chew scenery in a villain role, a large, bigger-than-life villain role for sure. Uh, I haven't chosen any for any other villains, but let's go with director while we're at it. We're here. Um, if, I, if I could choose, I would go with James Mangold. I know people don't really like the last Indiana Jones film. Apparently, it's not very good. I haven't seen it myself, and I probably never will. But James Mangold can do large, big-budget action. He's done The Wolverine and Lowe. Logan. I think he could do a space-faring sort of adventure, you know, violent story. I think he's worked with comic book stuff before. He's a dependable director. If he's not, you know, still working with Disney, I think he'd be a good talent to, to, drop, to grab. And of course, while we're in the same boat, might as well grab another Marvel duo with the Russo brothers. They wanted to do a Batman movie and James Gunn said no, I think, but why not give them the authority movie? They, they can do big budget action. We've seen Captain America Winter Soldier in the Infinity War saga, 
you know, think of the Thanos fight, but with the authority, I think they could do really good things with that. So those are my choices for a fan cast of the authority. Maybe they'll start announcing stuff in the next year because uh, James Gunn likes to talk online a lot about stuff. And in the meantime, you can respect my authority.